This is Renee Yearlings coming to you from my house and Paul Dini is on his way over here right now. And tonight we're actually going to watch the preview of his new show Tower Prep on Cartoon Network. So I'm getting a little bit of food ready and I'm really excited and I'm really happy that you're here to watch with us. What's up Paul? Not much Renee. This, you're looking at it. <laughs> I really want to thank you for coming out. This is my first video blog ever. I'm honored. And I just wanted to say, just like at the beginning, just to get it mm -hmm. out there, mm -hmm. that we've done a lot of really crazy things yes. in our years together. We've mm -hmm. laser tagged. Laser tagged, not a Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese, puppet shows. Puppet shows, you came to our wedding. We have a lot of fun. Yes. But because this is my first blog, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we stay relatively serious. Okay, we have. Don't get too wacky. Yes, dignity. Dign a lot of dignity. Above all. Integrity. Of yes. Above all. Yes. So, dignity. Right? Serious. <laughs> I'm going to make a mess here. Like your glasses. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just, I sucked it back down. Today I actually looked up your credits mm -hmm. online. Oh my god. And I was starstruck. Were there any? <laughs> Were there any? Do you know how many credits you have? No. Between comic books, television, film, and video games. Um, 17. <laughs> All the comic books. All the comic books. TV uh, series. Okay, okay, comic books. 527. Wow. 527 credits man. this man has, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. T. Mr. T. Mr. T. You have the Mr. T down there. Okay, yeah. Mr. T. Dungeons and Dragons. He, he man. man. And, and the, the masters, masters of the, of the universe. universe. Yeah. Man. Um. First credit. First credit. Was what? It was an episode of uh, The New Adventures of Mighty Mouse, not the good Mighty Mouse that was directed by Ralph Bakshi and John Chris Velucci. It was the crummy Mighty Mouse. They had just nonstop production and animation because Saturday morning was such a, a force at that time. And if they weren't handing out staff jobs, you would just pick up a few freelance assignments. So at the time I was, you know, fast and good enough. And so, they so it was all freelance. It was well. Uh, some of the stuff was I was on staff for some of it, like uh, the Ruby Spear stuff. They did the Mr. T, and they mm -hmm. did. Um, Super Kate and, and uh, a few other things. I was on staff there for a few months and I was actually on staff at Filmation for about a year when they did uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. So, And then I, actually around the time of uh, when I was at Ruby Spears, I guess it was 83, 84, I got a job offer from Lucasfilm to go up there. I went right. up to Lucasfilm. And you were at the ranch. For Skywalker Ranch for four time. years. Four yeah. Years. Did you live up there the whole time? Not on the ranch. George would have had me run off. Oh. <laughs> He would have found me eventually. I would have liked to. God, the ranch is beautiful. It's it's wonderful. Well, I'm going to move now sure. to the next period, which was Animaniacs mm -hmm. um, and Pinky and the Brain. Right. I had, had made a few connections through the folks working for Steven Spielberg, and he would, I heard he was gearing up to do more cartoons. And uh, one of the last things I saw. Um, getting finished at, at Skywalker was Roger Rabbit and that was really the start wow. of his interest in revising and revisiting classic animation. Because you were a big fan of that when you were a kid. Yeah, I love Warner Brothers cartoons and, uh, and I knew this was not going to be like going to work with Chuck Jones or Bruce Freeling and making Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner cartoons. It was going to be something different. But I thought, yeah, it's at least a chance to get in there and, and try something. Red Oliver and Bruce Tim and Eric Radomsky who I would join up with and uh, work uh, work with on Batman and Batman Beyond. Oh, now, had you worked? With You'd worked on the Batman comic before the TV series, or no? No, not at all. I really? Mean, no, I knew who Batman was, of course, because you grew up being so watching So the Batman the... animated series yeah. was your first Batman? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Batman was the character who came up from time to time in uh, in, in comic book and, and, and animation circles in Los Angeles. And I'd see development after development done, and it was always the same kind of... Kind of a take on like the 60s version or a lighter version of Batman, which um, 
nobody was really interested in, interested in doing it at the time because Tim Burton was making his uh, first Batman picture, and that was had a darker feel to it. Mm -hmm. He had actually made the, the the first Batman movie, and then he was looking at making a second one. And then Warner said, "Hey, let's get an animated series to kind of ride on the coattails of this." And we were given the opportunity to make it. You know, yeah, it it, it harkened back to the Tim Burton. Uh, movies in a certain way, in a certain tone, but really it was our own as far as the um, the stories and the look of the show and everything like that. So and that was really the first of the DC uh, adaptations. Okay, so then you went pretty much right from the, Batman, yes, mm -hmm. and and all of the DC stuff, and Duck Dodgers, and Duck Dodgers, mm -hmm. and right into Lost. Yeah, and then now flash forward to tonight. Yes, we're watching Tower Prep, which is also live action. Mm -hmm. Um, but for a for a different demographic, and that mm -hmm. that brings up the fact that you've also done Arkham Asylum, right. the video game. Video game. Mm -hmm. And over the course of the years, you have worked on basically every demographic that there is. Pretty you've much, worked, yeah. you've worked for little kids. You're working for teens. You've worked for teens in the past, mm -hmm. and you've worked for the adult audience. So, my question is: When you write for the different demographics, do you find that? It's that you write differently, or do you think that kids today are so savvy? Well, I don't know if I write differently. I know that I, I you know, I might tone down certain things, like um, whereas on a show like Lost, it really is all-out action. We were encouraged to think as as adult as we possibly could, you know, for the for the stories mm -hmm. and the, the tone of the, of the series. Um, but also, I think that more than anything, in the, in the sort of writing that I, I like reading, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a there is a tone that sort of speaks to all ages. You know, there is whether it is something that is um, written for for kid, ostensibly for kids, or uh, or adults or teens. There is a you know I, I go over this and I try and analyze this. I have a hard time putting a name to it, but there is a sort of I don't know uh, a, a quality of character that resonates from young kids to adults. But when I write animation, I always try and strike for that, you know, that, that sort of accessibility that means something to, uh, that, that's fun and, and kind of outrageous for kids, and yet that might have a little bit more character to it for adults, that they're more a little, they're a little more invested in what's going on. And I tried the same with comic books and the video games, and certainly with something like Tower Prep. Where am I? Who are you guys? You don't have much time here. Wait, how do you know my name? What is this place, Tower Prep? How about you tell us and we'll all know. So tell me about Tower Prep. Tell me what we're going to see tonight. Tower Prep um, is, uh, a, first and foremost, it's a very, uh, it's an isolated school, boarding school for special kids who have extraordinary abilities. Most of us are what you call special. Give me a for instance. Give me a for instance. So these kids are sought out through a, a testing process when they're very young. And they're taken to Tower Prep when they're older and taught a very rigorous program about how to master their abilities before their abilities master them. You know the expression, I can read you like a book? Like a second language to me. He's not lying. The school seemingly has a benevolent purpose. However, there's a lot of mystery that surrounds the school. And we see the school through the eyes of Ian Archer, who's a young boy who um, is in trouble with his home life, he's out of step with uh, what's going on in his regular school, he is taken to Tower and kind of dropped in the middle of things and he's left to figure it out for himself. So with very little help he is just trying to get through the day and figure out, you know, where am I, who am I, who are these strange people? And in the course of the day he runs into three other students who feel the same way that he does. And more important than that, they want to get out of, get out of there. And that sounds great to Ian, and he becomes a de facto leader of the group as they put together a quick plan for escape. Okay. Well, I'm ready to watch. Yeah. Let's go watch. <laughs> 